Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act 2. And as you can see, Art and I are with our favorite love and relationship coach, Michelle Fabrega. Michelle, welcome back. Great to see you again. Thanks. Good to be here with both of you. Good morning, Michelle. Afternoon, whatever time of day it is, I forget. <laughs> uh, I have a question for you. I'd like to seek your advice about uh, a subject. How do you deal with people who ask you for advice? <laughs> Let's listen. You know, somebody asks you for, for advice, probably on a far more uh, uh, intimate subject than I am right now, but just in general, uh, do you have any uh, 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 ways uh, that people might want to think about how they provide unsolicited advice? Or so, so the solicited advice, but from somebody who you just don't know that well? Yeah, yeah. Or, or, or somebody maybe you do know well, but... Right. Yeah, exactly, yeah. There's lots of... It, it, we, You know, people... I, my sense is that people throw around the, the request for, give me some advice on this or give me some feedback on this. They throw it around lightly when they don't really mean it. Now, of course, you're a professional. So when somebody asks you for advice, you know, they know you, you might have an, a, a good answer for them. You can help them. But when they ask, somebody asks me for advice, it's completely different. Uh, no and yes. <laughs> um, so basically, I'll answer your thing about um, when people ask me for advice, because I don't think advice is useful in general. So I don't really give advice. I don't see oh. it as giving advice. But I'll get there in a second. So I, I think I agree with you. The other point is that when somebody does ask you for advice, the question is, do they really want it? Or do they want something else? I mean, usually they might want compassion. They want someone to listen. They want someone to witness the struggle that they're in. I mean, I think... Oftentimes people are in you know, like a tailspin or like vexed about some problem and they're like, what should I do? What should, I don't know what to do. What do you think, what would you do? You know, what should I do? And they're kind of in a kind of, a, um, it, it's a momentary cry for help. But in reality, I think they're really wanting, probably wanting something different. And in a way it doesn't really help to give them advice because you're kind of, you're, you're short circuiting something they're going through because they're still in the, um, you know, upset or confusion of it. And it's too soon. It's too soon to jump in with advice is wow. the first point, really. You know, you know it's kind of interesting um, because I, I, do, I do have, what I normally do when people ask me for advice is on, on something that's more serious than just like, uh, uh, you know, uh, what, what do you think about the Hyundai or uh, some other, uh, or, or the Tampa Bay uh, Lightning who just won their second back-to-back uh, hockey uh, championship, Stanley Cup. Uh, as soon as somebody asks me on a very serious note about something personal for advice for them, the first thing I do is I go into listening mode. And generally speaking, I let them talk themselves out sometimes for 15, 20 minutes because all they're trying to do is figure out what it is that's confusing them. So uh, yeah. it, it seems to me that the, that my, my reaction is to listen as opposed to uh, offer advice, which I don't know that they necessarily want. They want to just express what's bugging them. They want to vent. Yeah. 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 And, and the other thing, too, is that if you were to offer advice, like if they really cornered you and they, you know, grab you by the, the tie, like in the cartoons and like, what should I do? You know, whatever. <laughs> it's kind of like, do you really if you were to give them advice, like, let's say, like, should I leave my relationship? And you say, well, actually, I think you should then you've just said something that basically is on record <laughs> that you believe that that's true for them. And how could you possibly know, obviously, but there's also that that leaves a sting of something that you reveal that, first of all, isn't really can't be fully considered because you're not in their situation. You don't know the full story. Um, you can't know the full story, really. So it, it just it generally doesn't go well when you do give advice, is my experience um, dealing with people picking up the pieces after advice has been given sometimes. So, but yeah, I love the listening idea. I think that's the main thing and, you know, help them really unpack it themselves and really, you know, 
if they really corner you, you can always say something like, well, you know, I don't really know what I would do. I mean, I'm not in your situation, but is there some other way I can help you sort this out? So it's kind of like to gracefully dodge the question, I think, is the best advice. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess um, that's why um, professionals, at least we see in the media, we see pro a professional like yourself portrayed as never making a statement, always asking a question. So <laughs> if, if I watch a television show and somebody's in therapy, the therapist always says, and how do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> oh, and how do you find? So I, um, but I guess that's, that's based on a truism um, that you don't give advice. You really are helping them find the answer. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it's important no matter what age, I mean, if you're, you're your children, your grandchildren, I mean, I mean, even with my kids, when they were little, it was like, Mama, what should I do? And it's kind of like, well, what are the choices here? And, and like, you know, help them kind of sort it out because we're growing this capacity in, well, we're always learning about our own capacity for decision making, but certainly with, you know, children, younger children, or even, you know, people in their 20s, 30s, whatever. It's like, how do we help them grow their own capacity to make good decisions for themselves? Because they're the only ones they're going to have with them, you know, all the time to do that. So I just think it's a gift, really, to, uh, to you know, gracefully dodge the question, question and instead support them in sorting it out. Because then they grow that, um, that muscle, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, well, I, think, I, you know, I think that's really great advice that if somebody asks you for advice, remember, if you give them <laughs> advice, it's on you. Yeah, and it's your now it's your fault. So you've let you've let them <laughs> drag you into their problems. And uh, uh, I, I think I like uh, best what you said. It's like almost uh, uh, with due respect, talking to a child and say, well, what do you think? Because they probably really don't know what they're asking or what their issue is and letting them talk it out. I, even if you were to give some kind of advice, uh, is letting them talk it out probably will help them more uh, just for them to understand what it is that they're dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, wait a minute. Is this is this the advice to not give <laughs> advice? Is that what this is? <laughs> yeah. but by the way, you know, I, I, love, I love this, this uh, three across shot of us because it's like, see no evil, oh. uh, uh, hear no evil, speak no evil. <laughs> okay. And I, I think we, we are, this is, this is our calling. <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, you don't Sorry, think so. Art. Okay. No. All right. I mean, anyway, I guess one last thing I want to say around it, I, mean, yeah. I always have one last thing, sorry. Um, you know, you can offer ideas. Like, well, what about, you know, would this be something that could work? Like you can sort of a, a, a underhand, um, pitch, I guess. I don't know. I don't know my baseball too well, but you know, something like a softer, like something, well, you could consider this, would this be up? So you can kind of help them brainstorm it, but yeah. you're still kind of letting them basically hold the reins of the situation. So yeah, I mean, I guess we're splitting hairs with what advice is because I mean, opinions are different, you know, asking for someone's opinion is a little different. So anyway, yeah. there it is. <laughs> uh, no, good, good. I think that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, people are always if if you know somebody and you respect them, you, you will have a tendency to ask their opinion. Um, what we often forget is that sometimes they don't want our opinion or they don't like the opinion we gave them. <laughs> or we're less qualified to give them uh, useful information than they really think. They're probably better well, off doing it themselves. <laughs> well, Art, you never know that from me. I have an opinion on everything. This is true. And I'm always right, as we all know. Far right. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, thank you so much. It's been an interesting topic, but I'm not sure. I think, I guess what I learned is not to give advice, to sidestep it. Mm. To sidestep it and, and be helpful. Yeah, but listen. Don't, right? don't offer listen. a solution. This yeah. is not my problem. I don't know what the solution will be. So you know, I, that they I, will I, accept. I think probably the best place to end this thing is so to our celebrating Act Two audience, how would you advise us 
to handle somebody who asks for our advice. Good idea. Good idea. All right. Thanks, Michelle. See you soon. See you soon. Thanks. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.